Any stone model 750 dates from about 1950. Had this set for a long time, probably about 16 years. One of the first Eddie Stone sets I collected. Um, I used it daily for probably about a decade uh, after I got it. I did a, a few little bits and pieces to it when I first got it, cleaned it up, lubricated the dial scale, um, realigned it, changed a few components, but uh, it hasn't really been recapped or anything. Um, probably about two, three resistors, maybe a couple of capacitors. It's still got the original FOTX fitted, uh, dated 1947. Um, anyway, I, I switched it on recently um, while it was out the case when I was looking for some information for a friend and I noticed that the uh, the IF gain control was intermittent, very scratchy, and also that the BFO um, was intermittent. It sometimes worked, it sometimes didn't. So I thought I'd uh, take a closer look at that. And the the BFO um, is actually in this set, is, it's like some other Registone sets, it's actually a a little unit there with a little tube on the top and the, all the BFO circuitry apart from the variable capacitor is actually built into that box there. To get into there you need to take the front panel off. Um, also to, to really to change the eye of gain control uh, which is a 10k pot wire wound um, you really need to take the front panel off. So they actually had um, what looks like a brand new front panel for this set. Um, the panel that was on when I first got it, it was, was grey. This is it. I, I resprayed it um, black with black wrinkle paint, but the top part didn't really wrinkle. You see, it's kind of smooth, but it looked pretty good. Anyway, about a, a year after I fitted that, I was given an front panel, and um, <clears throat> I had it um, uh, powder coated with um, with a sort of wrinkle effect paint, similar to what. Uh, Car restorers use on some components in cars, and uh, it's it's much harder, more durable finish than the paint, and it looks great. It looks like it looks like it's brand new. So anyway, as soon as I had to take the front panel off, I thought, well, what the hell? I might as well finally fit this panel. It's been in storage for about twelve years. <laughs> so anyway, I did all that, um, refitted everything to the new front panel, uh, serviced the BFO. It was actually um, a, a connection had never been soldered on pin one of the tube. That's the grid pin. And um, there was a, a silver mica capacitor and a res resistor on there. And they were soldered together, but they hadn't actually soldered to the pin. The pin was like brand new. And it was just resting against, the, these component wires were just resting against that pin. And it had been like that for 70 years and been working. And finally he decided, and I guess it just got a little more oxidized than it was in the past, and decided to become intermittent. So soldered that together. And while I was in there, I replaced uh, three tubular uh, capacitors. The two resistors that are in there were perfectly fine. They were actually within 5% tolerance and um, the two silver micas were fine. So I just give it a good clean, change those three capacitors, put it all back together and um, reinstalled it in the set. Changed out the IF gain control for a new wire wound part um, and then put it all back together. Um, it's looking pretty good. It works pretty good. Uh, this is uh, broadcast band it actually has it doesn't go all the way to the end of broadcast band because this is a, a dual IF um, receiver it's got two IFs the first IFs at 1.6 megahertz and the second IF is much lower I can't quite remember what it is I think it's 80 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz or something like that so yeah I haven't actually <laughs> done any field servicing on this set for years and years anyway it, it's been a great set it, it, because it's dual conversion, it's got a great image rejection on the shortwave bands. And the only deficiency I find with it is it doesn't go all the way to the end of the broadcast band. It ends at about 1450 because the first IF is at 1.6 uh, megahertz. So it doesn't quite get that far up there, which is a bit of a nuisance. But apart from that, it works great. And the, one of the best things about these Eddie Stones is the tuning is just superb. Um, you can basically go one scale, end of the scale to the other, um, with a few twists of the tuning dial because it's so, so smooth. It's just, just beautiful tuning. I think it works great. 
to actually go to an S meter. The S meter is separate. And there's a machine speaker back there too. And the S meter is uh, pretty cool. The BFO working great now. There's no product detector in this, so you uh, you've got to turn the turn the gain controls down the RF gain or the IF gain or both to uh, to get the BFO to function properly, especially on a sideband signal. I've only got about six feet of wire connected to this thing at the moment, so um, not a lot happening in the short waves. Seven fifty. 